Welcome to Big Blend Radio's Nature Connection Show with Lisa and Nancy, publishers of Big Blend Magazines and nature photographer Margot Carrera. Welcome, everybody. Today, we're very excited to speak with Jeff Stump. He is a senior manager of land protection for Save the Redwoods League. And you know, you've heard uh, Jessica Carter, Sam Hodder on our show before talking about the Redwoods. Um, This organization is incredible. And what they do, they save the Redwoods up in California. And in fact, they're one of the nation's longest running conservation organizations. So I encourage you to go to their website, savetheredwoods.org. But today, Jeff is joining Nancy. I was going to say Nancy and I. Nancy's not here, but Margo and I. Uh, Margo is on the show every time on our Nature Connection show. She's a, an amazing nature photographer. But Jeff is joining us to talk about this new purchase of land, a 394-acre redwood forest in Sonoma County. In fact, it also is home to one of the county's tallest trees. So welcome to the show, Jeff. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me on today. Hey, and Margo, you doing good? I'm I'm calling you Nancy too. You have to take mother role today. I'm not your mother. I'm not your mother. I know. <laughs> I, I know. might be close to her age, but I'm not your mother. <laughs> no, no. I think you know your friend, but you know, I was just like, hey, my mom's here. No, but yeah. um, Margo I think mother. this is exciting to talk about the redwoods. You know that we're all passionate. All three of us, Nancy, you and I, are passionate about that. And of course, Jeff, you're passionate about the redwoods uh, you've been saving them for over is like quite a, like 30 years am i right in that 30 years you've been in this well I've, I've been working in conservation for uh about 30 years <clears throat> i've been with save the redwoods league for, oh, about 20 months now so i've sort of been building up to this point where i get to work with people to protect giant trees and wow uh, you know mm. how much Fun and and fulfilling can that can life be? It's really wonderful to be here. And but when you say about thirty years of conservation, right? When you think about conservation, um, and I want to get into the the land acquisition and and all of that. But just one thing that I think is always important, we always bring up on this show is biodiversity. So if you're saving redwoods, aren't you also fa- saving this other habitat that makes the redwoods grow, and the redwoods make the rest grow? Um, and help the birds and the animals. So it's that web of life. So it, 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 even if you were saving ferns, it would be important, right? Yeah, absolutely. It is, it is, and it, you know, it turns out that redwood trees can be a whole ecology to their, to themselves. You know, think about these trees that are standing in, you know, 300 feet in some places and they, so reaching up in the sky and slowing down the fog and, and absorbing fog turns out through mycelium and their stomatas that we're, we're learning. So yeah, it's, Ooh. it's, it's a, it's a web of life. And so when we protect a redwood forest, we're protecting all the things, you know, from the mycelium, mycelium up to the, to the biggest trees in the world. Um, Northern spotted owls and tree voles. It's, it's just super exciting and to be working in this, this kind of diversity. Okay, so you brought up mycelium. Now, listeners, Ooh. you know I'm a little crazy about that, right? Um, mushrooms and fungus. And then I watched that documentary. It showed, like, how mushrooms and fungus have, like, this underground channels and connections just like trees. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, and they're older than dinosaurs. Like, what? So, mm. like, when we start talking about redwoods, do you think these two – I mean, I don't know all the scientific stuff, right? I'm not a biologist, but they kind of run the same kind of underground network. Do you think they talk to each other under there and go like, come on, I'll give you this. If you give me that, I'll give you this nutrient. I'll give you that one. Kind of like a grocery store (laughs) underground. Yeah. How can that not be true? You know, I'm not a scientist either. I know just enough to get myself in trouble on times like this, but it's, it's very interesting. These trees link up to provide support for each other. You know, a redwood, the roots don't go that deep and they link up and hold each other up through these, you know, these big windstorms. And you think about it, these things are, these trees in some places are reaching up in the 300 plus, almost 400 feet is the tallest redwood. So they, they link up and, you know, do they share resources? 
Well, you got to think maybe they do. I learned something really interesting recently, a little bit off topic, but, um, you know, there's albino redwoods out there. What? Mm, yeah. What? Totally white oh. tree. And it has a, it has a purpose. It turns out these trees sequester and, and hold on to heavy metals. So the tree, instead of absorbing them, will absorb them into this, this stem that's completely, you know, growing for that purpose. It's super interesting research and what shows how complex these whole systems are and why we need to protect them. We need oh to protect God. them, restore them, and then we need to do what Jessica does and help people get out to see these wonderful forests. So yeah. that's such an exciting uh, space to be working in. I, I'm loving this because I think we're learning more and more about what, what um, I think, you know, our big thing is nature connection on Big Blend Radio here and Margo, Nancy and I are all about is um, the community. And I think the redwoods represent the importance of community and looking at this um, transaction of land, 394 acres, from what I'm reading, it basically you had supporters in every state, not just California where the redwoods are, come together as a community to save the redwoods, basically, right? To save the Redwoods League. So you have a community to help a community of redwoods, which is like the epitome of what a community does. That's right. And it starts with the local community in Guerneville. You know, these oh, folks. Guerneville. <laughs> you know, it used to be called Stumptown because in 1870, they finished cutting down you know, the la almost the last of tens of thousands of acres of red old growth redwoods along the Russian River. And there's a few remnants, including the Clark tree, which is on the property that we've that we protected. And it's really this this it's this grand tree that towers above everything else that <clears throat> brought together this community to mm. you know really try to protect it and that's why we're here today you know we, we play an important role but but it is about community and you know this this property was home to the pomo you know before uh, the white folks came you know and, and, mm -hmm. and changed this so to me this is a this is a neat opportunity to to protect this giant tree that represents you know, it represents the past. It's probably close to 2,000 year, years old. It was the tallest tree in Sonoma County at one time. It, it took a little damage this winter when the top got knocked off of it. But oh, it also wow. represents it represents the future because now we get to work with our public agency partners to change the course of this land and, and uh, help them design a restoration plan so that this forest will be giant once again you know this is a generational kind of thing i'm not going to see it but there my hope is that there be generations of of humans that are going to be able to walk through this forest once again and it's in its old growth state mm. and, and when you talk about the pomo people i mean because you know it's so important that we go back to our indigenous peoples of how they lived and they were real stewards of the land from the get go. Right. And still are. And I know that they're really um, strong about taking care of the water and the forest and that the two are connected. Like if you don't take care of the forest, the, the water's not going to be as clean and vice versa. And it's also about subsistence and, and, and livelihood. So they understand, you know, survival comes from how our actions are as humans right. and so what are, are yeah you haven't learned that lesson very well no but you guys are helping us <laughs> guide us forward and be more stewards i mean i yeah. think i mean we do suck as as society as as what we've done to the land but um you know we have research now we have science we have yeah. real proof of like hey don't do this anymore do that do this do that you know Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think the fact that you had so many supporters across the country shows that people are getting it. And, of course, Redwoods are an icon, right, as a destination <laughs> in tourism, whether it's the national park, the state parks, the, the different individual preserves and reserves that you can go to. 
Um, so travelers understand like that, that as soon as you get into the forest, the air changes your body. And I want to go to Margo on this because I know for you that has happened as well. Like I remember getting on the car when we did the last drive up and just going, okay, I don't think I want to go anywhere. I'm just going to sit here for the rest of the day. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and kind of it's, it's healing air. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think I spoke on, maybe it was the other red, red uh, show that we did. Save the Redwood show we did uh, last year, I think it was, mm-hmm. um, where I um, got the opportunity to walk through an area that had been purchased um, uh, by a group that, uh, an area of Redwoods that was purchased by a group that allows people to have their burials there. Mm. Um, and I, uh, purchased a, a a plot or a space next to a redwood tree um, because I had um, metastatic cancer and I could at the time I was barely walking because it was in my spine and my hip and they took me on a tour of uh, the location of uh, where where their redwood trees were and as I was walking around, I was supposed to pick a tree. And I do that with my heart. You know, I, I fall in love with a tree if, if I see it. So I walked quite a bit and I was using, um, walking sticks. And before I got in there, I was in quite a bit of pain. Once I was in the forest, I had zero pain. I could walk better. I literally could walk up the slopes and walk around the trees. And yes, I did find a tree I fell in love with and said, okay, when I'm ready to go, I'm going to hang out with you. (laughs) So, and, and I thought, what a wonderful thing to do because when it's my time to go, where, where would I want my children to be and say goodbye to me? And, you know, uh, in a chapel or, in the redwoods. And I know my kids love to camp and love nature like I do. So that's, that's what made my decision. But I mm. literally had a physical, a noticeable physical change in the redwoods. They made me, it, it, it took all the pain away and gave me strength to be able to walk uh, well in that area. So yeah, I, that's, there's that's something. Wonderful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, I, that's the it, healing thing of the nat- of nature, right, Jeff? Yeah, I mean, I certainly can can share in that. You know, almost every time I walk into a grove with a group of people, you feel this quietness descend on on your whole being, and conversations drop to a whisper, right? And, and I and I think it's this this effect, this beautiful natural environment has on us, and and. And that's a sense of respect and, and awe, you know, and humans need awe in their lives to, to be functional. So it's really, really remarkable. So yeah, thanks for that story. That's, that's, that's really beautiful. Yeah. And it it is, and I appreciate Margo even sharing her personal life on this, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and I think the redwoods mean something for everyone. And that's why I was going to the power of so many people going across the country to help you. Um, that's amazing because you would think, oh, local Californians will support certain land things, right? But this yeah. was nationwide, all 50 states, Alaska and Hawaii included. That's pretty even, incredible. Even Iowa. It was amazing. I walked through this list. And <laughs> it's even more exciting than that because there there includes provinces from Canada and some countries too. So, oh. Uh, yeah, it's really kind of, it's really a neat story and, and it speaks to the iconic nature of Redwoods. And when I got to the league and I started talking to folks, I, I remembered something I knew. Everybody loves Redwoods. We understand mm. how important they are. And I think we understand how much damage we've done and how important these opportunities are when we can, you know, buy back properties, put them into, you know, 
permanent public stewardship so they can they can heal mm, exactly and say like i i look at mirror woods as one of those um iconic stories of mm-hmm. conservation right um and the national park service and, and it was amazing i mean people got together and and um and this story is one of those too so let's get into that story so there's this 394 acre i mean 394 acres is pretty big redwood forest you know and sonoma county so you got one of the tallest trees in the county um you know those are the rock stars right you know that's our that that's like the you know marilyn monroe of the trees mm-hmm. to get everybody to have the attention towards this forest but every tree in that forest is important and every part of its function is important all the mycelium like you were saying i love just saying mycelium isn't that right. cool i do <laughs> i do I know I'm not high on mushrooms. I just like mushrooms. Um, but uh, when we get to this, this this was a, a 6.5 million, right? To take this from a family trust. So kind of give us a view of how this went down. Um, you got all these people. You got a loan from David and Lucille Packard Foundation, um, the, a matching gift from the Federated Indians of Graton. Is it Grayton? Rancheria? Grayton. I've never... Great, and I'm never good at pronunciation. So, sorry, just lived in too many countries and now mm-hmm. messed up. Um, but all these donations come together. But this is a land acquisition, and obviously there's a loan, which means more money has to go in. And yet, at the same time, you're purchasing this land, making sure it's secure, and then you're going to do a transfer. So let's right. go to what? Who has this? Who is the revocable family trust? The RB. RMB, what is that about? Like, is this what? Who had it, and why did? The, how did this all happen? Basically, yeah, that's, that, that, that's a great question. So, the the RMB uh, Revocable Family Trust is one of the big three timber owners in California, Redwood Timber Owners. Mm. In California. So they own <clears throat> large properties throughout the Redwood Range, and you know what they tell me is that it's their job to bring logs to, to the mill. Right. And so we got, you know, really this is a unique opportunity because again, going back to the sense of community and place, you know, this is 400 acres on the Russian river. It's a, has a mile of river frontage and that river is important for what well, has, you know, the three major uh, imagine this fish in, in California, steelhead as coho, um, and has king salmon, a Chinook salmon. Mm. So super important. And so protecting this watershed has been a priority uh, for a very long time. And, and this used to be an ecosystem that was tens of thousands, ac- tens of thousands of oh. acres of giant old growth redwoods. Right. And you can imagine that that a forest of that size had its own weather. And, and so things have changed. And so the opportunity to work with a landowner um, like the trust to, to purchase property is, is, uh, doesn't come around a lot and, and we need to take advantage of that. And, and really the Sonoma County reached out to us because they knew that we, the league with its tremendous supporters around the country has the ability to move quick, more quickly than a public agency can. So, you know, I got a call in December and an invitation to come see this property. And by January, we were sitting down, sitting down with uh, the owner to try to put a purchase together. And, and wow. he, he wanted us to go really fast. I mean, we went fast, but they, you know, they wanted to go faster. But we, we worked out a contract. Um, we had to get an appraisal done to figure out what the price is. So you appraise the land and the timber. And then we do all wow. the work behind a, behind a land transaction and, and then sign a contract. And, and with enough time to raise money. And so our amazing staff at the league um, who focus on raising funds did such an outstanding job to bring this money to the table so quickly. And they had about three months. Wow. And that's amazing. Right. Well, so that, that that's shows incredible. That, and that shows that you guys, I mean, you, like I said, you were one of the oldest conservation organizations we have in the country. I think you and National Parks Conservation Association and, 
you know, and, and American forests, like there's certain organizations that knew eons ago that we need to do it. And, you know, it's, it's amazing to me that we were even understanding that years ago and we're still beating the drum. Right. right. And, but doing that and, and obviously having supporters that understand to be able to do it that fast, that shows the power of your organization. Um, but even to quantify the value of a forest, that's insane to me. Cause to me, it's like forests are life, <laughs> period. You know, water is life, forests are life. It's the same thing to me. So it's like, how do you even quantify numbers and dollars to this when you think yeah, about I- our health? Um, you, you know, Margot's story is amazing, yeah. but then you go to just even the fact of breathing. Can mm-hmm. you touch on that a little bit about land conservancy? It's like when I was talking about the very beginning of this conversation about this network, this community that the forest really shows, like you're giving life to so many animals and plant species and fungus species, but also humans. If we don't have our forests, we aren't going to breathe, right? Right. Well, again, you've hit on another topic of community. And we, the League, is part of a land trust community that really focuses on trying to protect critical natural resources for, for people and for species and for the health of the planet. So, but how we do this is, is a little bit like business, right? We, we work under appraisal guidelines that, that put a value on development that's not going to happen or trees that won't be cut down. And that, that's how you quantify mm. on the business side of this, of this work. Um, and how, how you come up with a number. So, but you're right. I mean, what is a forest worth? It's, it's worth so much more mm-hmm. uh, in so many other ways, intangible ways. And, um, you know, as a sequestering carbon, you know, I think you probably heard from Jessica or Sam that redwood trees <clears throat> sequester the most carbon of any single organism on the planet. It's right? insane. Right? One, one, it's really yeah. amazing. So they're so, they're so important and yeah, but it's, it's comes down to business and luckily, wow. you know, we're able to raise money and, and meet the needs of, of a landowner. Um, and this, this is an alternative. It's an alternative to going through with a, a timber harvest and then a development of homes on the property. So I, I and- think I, that is an awesome balance in, in getting down to business. I just am not trying to interrupt, but like when I say, here's this value of this forest, like for our life, right? And then mm-hmm. you get down to the nitty gritty. It's like someone's like, here's my land. Here's this. Maybe they need the money. Maybe, you know, everybody's got a different thing, right, of selling. But um, it's actually, I think, you know, it, it's, it's, um, they were pretty cool about it. To be honest, I'm just going to say, I, it looks like the people that sold it were pretty cool about it. And um, it does go down to land is so valuable right now. It's so expensive. California, are you kidding me? You can't yeah. even, you know, buy, you know, a house is $6 million now. So I think it, you've got some good stuff going in here that they understood. And this is the alternative for people to think about what they're doing with their land. So I just want to say like, as much as I'm going like, you know, the forest is our lifeblood. There are people and businesses. And I mean, even a timber organization to say, you know, I think we'll do this instead. I think that's a way of a future, right? For us to look at. I hope so. Businesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hope so. And we're grateful because you, know, you don't, you aren't able to purchase land without a willing seller. And, you know, we worked hard on both sides to come to a point where we could have an agreement. So yeah, we are grateful to the trust um, for giving us the time to raise the money and letting us go public and to talk about it because mm. those like this is how we reach people and let them know what we're doing. So really, really appreciative of, of your time as well. Oh God, you guys are rock stars, man. Are you kidding me? Like Marco, and that you know, I'm like, I, I think that I heard the, saw the press room, I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, yeah, yeah, bring, bring, come on, get back on the show immediately. <laughs> come on. Yeah. That's they, cool. Yeah. Go she ahead, said Marco. you guys were going to be on and, t- and tell about what you just did. And 
I'm there. I'm there. I, yeah. I want to get the word out. Yeah. It's exactly. wonderful what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, it's so important. And I love the fact that you do have a community of people that are supporting you. So this land, what, how is that now when we think about the traditional lands of the Pomo people um, nowadays? How does that look when you think about the support that you've also had from the Great and Rancheria? Um, Rancheria, Rancheria. Oh boy, I'm going to get in so much trouble. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. Um, what, how does that look for our indigenous people now with this land being purchased? Are they excited that it's going to be taken care of? Well, yeah, I think there's a lot of excitement. I'm, you know, offering up a matching grant um, was very significant. You know, it allowed, allowed us to raise money much faster than, than, you know, we could have on a one-to-one. Everybody loves to double your money, right? Whether you're doubling it, for yourself or for somebody else. So it's, it's a really neat opportunity. I mean, this is an open, this is a evolving story. I, you know, hope to walk the land with a member of the Kashaya uh, Pomo. Um, mm. The Kashaya also uh, lived in this area. So, you know, we're still learning about what this opportunity might be. And, whether that's you know some co-management um, with the county, I don't, I don't know that what that that story's not written yet. But we're very Ooh. open, to understanding you know what ideas people have, um, you know the neighbors, but also the the tribes. And so you know the exciting thing for us now is that we get to you know turn from this absolute sprint of trying to protect this property to getting ready to transfer it into public ownership, and that prop that process takes about a year and this property is going to go to Sonoma County with, you know, and they're going to be the stewards. And my hope is, and expectation is, is that we're all going to get to, to help them, you know, guide this property into the future. And that includes the league and it includes the, you know, the indigenous people. I love that. I love that. Margo, don't you think the indigenous people have to be part of this, you know, they hunted that land and fished that land and lived on that land. And if, if the, you know, the generations of now can be part of it, it would be awesome. You know? I agree. Um, yeah. Moving forward, you know, and I, I love that you said that about, you know, now it's like turn to the next story. You know, I think nonprofits like, you know, save the Redwoods league do such a good job of getting the community involved. Obviously, as we talked earlier, you know, getting the support for the funding. But when it starts going into a county, now becoming Sonoma County land in about a year or so, right? There's always these open public comment things that happen with parks, nonprofits. Mm -hmm. Um, These open comments, these open places, you know, I think you see them advertise, you see them on social media as an event. Hey, this is open, you know, public commentary time. And sometimes it's just like, oh, yeah, 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 right? But it's really a big deal as part of your community to be part of that story. Like, what do you want to see of that land? It's um, so important when these open openings are there because so many times they're not there. <laughs> and I think a lot of times, and I think what you guys have done so well, too, is understand the balance of tourism and uh nature space right um you've been involved uh the save the redwoods league have been involved um in so many projects that hey we've got too many people in this portion of the redwoods we need to do like a boardwalk or something like that to not have people walk Mm -hmm. on the roots not you know those kinds of things so there's this balance of understanding you know our footprint on the land and these open community conversations have to happen. And so many times, and that's what we work in, in the tourism world. Mm -hmm. um, You go to smaller communities and you have them in the redwoods. Um, Then I'm not going to talk about what the communities say or do, but you have small communities is what I'm saying. But a lot of communities we work in as we travel the country doing parks and public land documentation and everything is, that um, there's a huge part of the community that doesn't want tourism. And then the other part going, if we don't have tourism, we're going to die. 
And it's about having input from all. And if you don't have the two sides connecting and coming to an agreement, just like our politics and up in the federal places, um, if both sides don't work together, it's not going to work for anybody. And that's the same with what you're doing. So I find that very important about these public opening times of conversation. Yeah. So well, you're right. You don't end up getting mad later. You know, don't right. get whiny later. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know? What I can tell you is that, yeah, you're right. And and what I can tell you is that Sonoma County is very good at public process. And the people are great at participating in it. So I know that that many people will bring their voice to the table and, and really help guide. Oh, that's awesome you know, guide the long-term outcome of this, of this property so that we're balancing the ability for this forest to heal, but also making sure that people can come out and see why it was so important, right? Mm-hmm. We don't raise money because we're locking things up and, and throwing the key away. We raise money because we're purchasing land, opening it to the public in a responsible way. You know, just just Jessica Carter's team does such such great work to make sure that we're connecting people to this forest so that they understand why it's so important. They have the kinds of experiences that that the two of you shared um, on your drive up the coast last time. I can't wait. I can't wait to go back again, man. You yeah, so many me? people see that and then and then participate with us and mm-hmm. whether that's political support or, or or financial support. So Yeah, you do need political support uh, support. Sure. You need both. And yes. the tourism support and responsible tourism. And this is responsible tourism. Um what you're doing when it goes into public. Um there's often like, hey, maybe this is a wilderness area and a place for restoration and habitat to be itself. And here's your little segment that you get to experience experience this so you can understand why we're saving it right um right. such an important thing um and one thing before you go i think that is really important about this piece of land that it's a habitat corridor mm. and this is a crucial thing about having nature spaces is that they are connected to other nature spaces so that animals aren't being hurt people aren't getting hurt either driving cars etc and, That's right. Um, for they migration just, too, yeah. and birds and all of that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. These these corridors are really important for the larger, well, all the animals, but you know, sort of keystone species like uh, mountain lion to have safe corridors to to travel, and so they can minimize their uh, you know relationship with humans because you know it's not good for an animal like that to. Um, uh, you know, interact with the human. So we want to give them spaces to move so they can move um, by themselves. And, and yeah, so this property, this 400 acres is connecting to 4,000 acres of either privately or publicly protected lands. Mm, right. So up and down, so up and down the Russian river. And so not only are you protecting, you know, the highway, per se, of the river for fish, right? Going up and down different times of the year is a really big corridor for, for anadromous fish. But but now you're linking the terrestrial lands up and protecting the forests and linking protected forests. So so these species have a chance to move and, and mm. to, to, to flourish. So it's, yeah, you're right. All these connected properties, it's a really exciting uh, part of this project. Do you work with the private landowners to say, hey, you know, we're restoring this land and you may see more animals and can you be nice to them? Like, (laughs) don't shoot them if they're walking through or something. You you know what I mean? Um, Because I know a lot of times when it comes to public land and there's a lot of land, it could be farming and they go like, hey, these birds are getting my crops. Like, what can we do? Um, Do you do that kind of work? Certainly, I think the league does a lot of education um, and really focused on the people who can most benefit is the, you know, getting kids out to the forest, getting kids out to the redwoods and teaching them how important the redwoods are. So, you know, kids are really effective teachers of their parents, Mm. right? You sort of manage up in your family. Mm. And so the league's programs to get children, to get school kids out, I think really is addressing that and talking about 
the importance of of protecting redwoods and land in general and and then making sure that people know how to go out and use it because that's how they turn around and be you know lifetime supporters like I, I think about my own experience when we first moved to California very first trip was up the coast mm. and all of a sudden I'm looking at this giant redwood tree well that came full circle for me when I'm in an interview trying you know wanting to work for the league and <laughs> I was able to share that experience and and you know truthfully say you know redwoods started me off on this whole journey really i know you've done a lot of work in marin county and agricultural lands too which that's an interesting balance between agricultural lands and nature and if you're a birder you go where the agriculture is right (laughs) Right? um so that's an interesting career you've had over these 30 years of like balancing it all so it started with a redwood tree is that like really like it like you went i'm going to go to nature where where were you originally from to like be awed by the the redwood. Well, my family grew up. My, my father was in the Air Force, so we lived in Europe and <clears throat> moved oh, to Lo- yeah. moved to California. And then I think I was in first grade, and so yeah, first family trip was up the coast. That's what you do. Wow. One of the things you remember the most is the enormous trees that really blew you away, right? And and mm. so it's so formative, and and I remember that trip. Um, and you know it's a journey. California is an amazing place, and we we have so many wow. amazing uh, resources to explore. And but it's you know the anchor. You always remember that first experience, and it was really fun to recount that and make sure and to so folks know that you know I have a, this deep connection. Um, mm. And it's it's I'm grateful for the opportunity, and and now. You know, having purchased this property, it, it's just really, it, it's exciting and, and we're ready to go to the next. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to be watching out and everyone, um, keep watching on, uh, save the redwoodsleague.org and their social media accounts for those, you know, public commentary times. Um, but you guys in California know what you're doing. You guys have that. You, you guys are good at it. Um, honestly, about having, hey, we're, we're carrying in Sonoma County is definitely, uh, you guys are good. You, you, we need you as poster children for the rest of the country. Seriously. Um, you're good at it and having open spaces and understanding the balance between farming and wine and all of that. Um, you guys are really good at it. And I think it's really thanks to organizations. The Redwoods. So save the redwoods.org. I think I said league before. So save the redwoods.org. That's the correct one. Everything is in our show notes. Uh, Margo, anything before we go? No, it was nice to hear about your full circle story. Uh, yeah. Jeff, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. And listen, um, before we go, don't you love that Jeff's last name is Stump and he's working with the Redwoods League? And he talked about Stump City. Like, seriously, you did. You brought that up. I had to bring it up. I can't leave You're this funny. show without bringing that up. You know, people know me. Um, that's pretty amazing. Did you ever think that when you decided I'm going to join the Save the Redwoods, that your last name was Stump? Well, my, my boss made a joke about it. The first email she sent out. So, had to. Yeah, had to. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah. it's pretty. And, and people see, people see it and they, they giggle and it's, it's funny. It's, it, it's a, it's a door opener because it always leads to a fun conversation and conversation leads to opportunities like what we have to, you know, this project we just had. So yeah, yeah it's interesting. Um, but we don't but want really stumps, good. but we do, we, we don't want stumps, but we want, we want more of Jeff's. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but we I, don't want save our trees, but you know what I mean. Save our trees. We don't want as many stumps. Yeah, yeah, right. no, but we like you as a stump. You know, <laughs> I just say yeah. we do. We appreciate your work. We really do, and um, I do believe there was a there was a, a birch involved in this right project. Am I allowed yeah. to say that? Yeah, sure. The owner owner's last name is Birch, and a couple people have made the joke that a, a birch and stump got together and put a deal together. So. That's true. It's again fun, funny conversation. I but love really, it. See, I'm meant to happen to for, for yeah. having me. Well, thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you for the work you do, and thank you everybody 
at uh, Save the Redwoods League. You guys rock. You've been you're historic over a hundred years of going to save these iconic trees and their communities, their habitats. So save the redwoods.org. Of course, keep up with Margot. Go to Carrera fineartgallery.com and keep up with us at bigblendradio.com. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you for listening to Big Blend Radio's Nature Connection Show. Follow us at bigblendradio.com and keep up with Margot at margocarrera.etsy.com.